In the last section, we created these two macros, number 25 and 26, and also we created two programmable input definitions to provide buttons to control each one of those macros. So in macro 25, we turned on an LED, and also we set a gain value to 50 and turned on a cross point, and we did just the opposite in macro number 26. And we defined button number one to call macro 25, and then button number two to call macro number 26. So it required two buttons, and uh, we used two uh, LEDs. Actually, all we did is we used the uh, LED number two, and uh, one button push would turn LED two on here, and the next button push would turn LED two off. Well, let's say we wanted to do this with one button. So let's get rid of button number two. So now we're simply defining button number one or programmable input number one to call a macro on close and macro number 25 is what gets called. So how do we set this up so that the next time it gets pushed macro 26 gets called and then when it gets pushed again it calls macro 25 and it gives us a toggle situation. That's what we want to what we want to create. Well, what if we do something like this? I'm going to grab, I'm just going to copy this and in place of the exit, I'm going to add it in, but have it call macro number 26. So look what happens here. We turn on the LED. We set the gain value. We set the cross point by turning it on. And then we redefine what the button does the next time it's pushed. So the next time it's pushed, it's going to call macro number 26. So now I push the button again, and it turns off the LED. It turns the gain value to zero for the input gain, and it turns off the cross point. Well, now let's add the command again. Now, what it does now is redefines itself to call macro number 25 the next time. So this will allow it to toggle back and forth with just one button. And that makes it extremely convenient because if you ever want to add functionality to that button you simply can add it to these macros here. We're only using four of the available commands. Now one thing I like to do, you don't have to do this, but I like to do it. Uh, it can be safe in some situations where a macro already exists with many more commands than you have. I like to make the last command be an exit. And I'll simply copy this here, and I'll come up top, and I'll paste that, and this will be number 25, and exit. So now we have two macros. And notice also in a text file, these macros are much easier to manage now, because we can have all of the macros in one text file. Now remember, all we're doing here is each one of these lines loads a command into the macro. So they're not running anything, they're just sitting there dormant waiting to be called. This line here actually changes the programmable input definition to run a macro on close. <clears throat> so that defines what the button's going to do. So we are able to do uh, not only macros by writing to each line of the macro remotely, but also defining what things are going to be doing in real time. So try this out if you get a chance and uh, see how well it works. Let's go on to the next section.